Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to the vlog. Today, I am gonna, of course, start my skincare routine. I was thinking about those of you out there with rosacea, you deal with burning, stinging, symptoms of sensitivity when you use your skincare products. With rosacea, people develop redness on the cheeks, little bumps that are red and filled with pus. But in people who have the deeper skin tones, those skin signs sometimes are missed. Um, or are not as obvious, especially to the untrained eye. And a lot of people with deeper skin tones end up getting misdiagnosed and they have rosacea. So talking about symptoms with your doctor is one of the most helpful pieces of information for guiding the diagnosis of rosacea. But symptoms include burning, stinging, itch, sensations of warmth in the face that come and go, as well as discomfort in the eyes. And of course, problems with skincare products and cosmetics. If you have rosacea, cleansing can be a really delicate, tricky balance because definitely can burn and sting and can wear away at your already kind of weakened skin barrier and make those symptoms of sensitivity worse. A lot of cleansers burn and sting. So use a really gentle, mild, creamy cleanser if you're feeling really sensitive use lukewarm water and try just washing your face once a day. Cleansing oils and cleansing balms are a great option to remove um, dirt, oil, and cosmetics first because they're less likely to burn and sting. Gotta get the drips off. All right, I'm coming in with the Healthy Renew Face Serum. I've really been enjoying this. Now this would be a good option for a lightweight hydrating serum if you have sensitive skin because this whole product line is meant for people with sensitive skin and it's moisturizing to help minimize the symptoms of sensitivity but it's this particular serum is not heavy sometimes heavy moisturizers for people with rosacea can actually elicit a flush not everyone but some people so the face cream in this line, I really like, but it is very rich. So if you are sensitive to really heavy moisturizers and you want something more lightweight, go with the serum. For my sunscreen today, I'm gonna use the CeraVe Hydrating Sheer Sunscreen. I reviewed this a while ago. It's a hybrid sunscreen, it's water resistant. Um, it's all right, um, but I wanna use it up. You know, I, I buy these products to try out and review and then I want to make sure I finish them so they don't go to waste. This hybrid sunscreen is more, the consistency is more of a, almost a fluid. It kind of is like a cross between a fluid and a cream. Hybrid sunscreen just means zinc plus some organic, aka chemical filters. So the cast, in, I find, is a lot less noticeable in comparison to an all mineral. But I also find that these hybrid sunscreens are a lot less likely to sting in comparison to the organic, AKA chemical sunscreens. So if you find that organic sunscreens, chemical sunscreens burn, sting, but you're put off by the heavy white cast of an all mineral sunscreen, try a hybrid sunscreen. It's a nice balance. It's not a zero cast though. If you have a deeper skin tone, it will show up, but it is a lot less noticeable. And a lot of people with deeper skin tones end up using the hybrid sunscreens. And they say, you know, after a while it just kind of blends in and it's not so bad. It all depends on your background skin tone though. I wish these brands would provide samples. That way you know how it's gonna look on your skin before you buy the bottle. Because while I like to think my reviews help you guys in deciding whether or not you're gonna buy something or not, you can't really tell just looking at how a product looks on my skin, how it's necessarily gonna look for you. Anytime somebody leaves a comment in any one of my videos like saying, is this a good sunscreen for oily skin? Almost always, either on a video or like a TikTok or something, almost always there'll be someone who's like, I've got oily skin, I love this, it's my holy grail. Then there'll be another person who's like, no, stay away, it's too greasy, it's too oily. So even though, you know, those kinds of things, it's like, you kind of just have to try it for yourself, honestly, um, to see if it ends up working. This one is a little bit shiny. It's water resistant though, which is nice. Like for humidity and sweat, easy to tolerate around the eyes for me. Again, that's another very individualized thing.
One thing too about sunscreen is that it also helps with the impaired skin barrier and helps reduce symptoms of sensitivity once you have it on there because it's you know helping to reduce water loss and limit penetration of irritants into the skin. It's almost like a barrier cream in a sense, depending on the consistency especially. And sunscreens like this with zinc um, are soothing. You know, zinc can be an, is anti-inflammatory, although some zinc sunscreens are, in my experience, and yours, because you guys have told me on the drying side. So I mentioned to you guys the other day that this like new thing that I've been enjoying doing is listening to my audiobook, which I'm still making my way through. Um, it's called uh, Crossroads. Anyway, so at night to unwind, like when I'm making dinner, I like to put my headphones on and just listen to the audiobook. It kind of helps me tune out and like keeps me from, you know, doom scrolling in my mind of just like things that I need to do and it just helps me unwind. Anyway, but you know, something about that, like you've got to wash behind your ears is the point I'm trying to make. Like it's, a, it's an area where a lot of people end up forgetting to wash, but um, especially if you're wearing headphones a lot, because back here you can get a lot of oily buildup and seborrheic dermatitis. I actually like to use an anti-dandruff shampoo back here to to clean behind my ears. This is an area where, you know, similar to dandruff on your scalp and seborrheic dermatitis on your face, you can get this oily, flaky, itchy, inflamed buildup. So I like to do that. And when you're wearing headphones a lot, that creates a moist, humid environment that's really more favorable for that little yeast malassezia. So it can make, you know, this kind of problem behind the ears even more of an issue for you. So stay on top of cleaning behind your ears, kids. So I bought this blood pressure monitor cuff on Amazon. I've been pretty happy with it because it will sync to an app on your phone so you can keep a log of your blood pressure and heart rate. I find that is something that's really useful, a useful metric. Like I'm not, I try to not get too into like tracking all these health metrics because it's sort of like, what are you gonna do with all that information? Then you just become like, you know, somebody who just writes down numbers all the time, like how many steps you got in a day, like how many hours of sleep, and it just becomes like, to what end, you know what I mean? But uh, all that to say, having a record of your blood pressure readings over a period of time is, can be a very useful information uh, to provide to your doctor because a lot of people um, deal with what they call white coat hypertension, meaning your blood pressure goes up in the doctor's office because maybe you're nervous, stressed out. Um, they call it white coat hypertension like because they attribute it to being nervous about the doctor, but honestly, it's gotten to a point where the amount of time you have to wait in a doctor's office is so frustrating that it gets your blood pressure up too, so it should be like, um, you know, waiting room, waiting room hypertension, like the stress of, of having to wait. Anyway, um, so I got this and I've been really happy with it. The cuff is um, a standard size and it, it also will fit a large, larger arm and it's been doing well. So yeah, it's, it's useful and I, I think, you know, like I said, what, what good is, are all these numbers? Well, like if you go to the doctor's office and you have a higher a blood pressure reading on the higher end, they're probably, you know, gonna tell you to maybe check it again and, you know, it can kind of be a thing. So having this and having a record to show them is really helpful because a lot of times your blood pressure will, will run a certain way and it'll be very different in the office. So that's handy to have. I've got my little pumpkin back there. I'm still burning the Tuscany trick or treat candle the cupcake one, it's not my favorite scent. I've, I think I've complained about this already in multiple vlogs and I have re I purchased a new, another candle in their Halloween set that I'm, I'm itching to buy, I'm itching to, to light into, but I have this thing in my personality where like with the candle, I'm gonna burn it, unless it's like really, really foul, which this is, isn't, it's just kind of like, you know, I know Tuscany can give a better candle profile. Um, unless it's just really foul, I'm gonna burn that thing all the way and I'm not gonna start a new candle until I finished it. Some people burn more than one candle at a time and let the, the fragrances like mingle and I bet that's really nice if you get the right pairing but I'm always like on the fence about if I should do that or if it's gonna be like weird and, and, and mess things up. Like I think one of my favorite Tuscany candles is the lemon sugar cookie 
and I really think that the lemon sugar cookie would be nice over like some of those more berry scents. I think that would be like a nice kind of way to blend those two. But I don't know, what would go good with cupcake? Maybe a cinnamon scented candle? So it was a gorgeous day on the Sunday. I had to get out, I could not spend it inside. As you can see, the sky is really, really blue and gorgeous. I'm over by the River Oaks neighborhood where there are all these mansions. I love to drive by these houses and just ogle them. A lot of them have these like massive walls in front of them, so you can't really see them too well, but over the holidays, this neighborhood is really fun to come to because they go all out lighting up their mansions and they all look beautiful. Uh, it's just something to see, something to behold. I wanted to go to Memorial Park um, and so that's a bit of a drive, but it kind of ended up to be a fail because actually I could not find a parking space uh, because everybody wanted to get out, which like I've said in other vlogs, I try and get outside as much as possible during the day. It's actually really good for your sleep cycle, for your mental health to get outside in during daylight hours and spend time outdoors uh, as much as possible. Like, especially if you work swing shifts, it can really help set your clock back. So because I couldn't find a place to park, I ended up coming over to Rice Village uh, area and they have that nice walking trail. Uh, getting some cloud footage here. I just think it's so zen. But I used to walk around this uh, park a lot um, in my older apartment, but I, I haven't been here in a while. It's always a fun time. Let me know in the comments. I think some of you went to Rice, so hopefully this footage brings back fond memories of your old stomping grounds. But uh, I love the pretty oak trees that line this walking path. I did not know that this existed, this garden back here. It's for the students, but I had to come and check it out. They have all sorts of beautiful flowers. The garden was actually closed, but you can, it is open to the, I guess open to the public um, during certain hours. Yeah, here's a little sign. I guess um, some alumni donated money for this garden and the idea is like to have a space for students to come and like learn about gardening. So maybe one day they will have their own garden. All right, so I am gonna show you guys some double cleansing in action here. Uh, this particular night, I decided I was gonna use, I've been using that DHC deep cleansing oil that I got from Stylevana. And I have rather been enjoying it. It's very similar to the Hada Labo cleansing oil, um, similar ingredients like olive oil, but it has an aroma to it. It has, I think it has rosemary in it. So you can definitely smell that, but it's a pleasant cleansing oil to use. One of the reasons I love using cleansing oils so much is they're just A, effective at removing cosmetics. Like on this particular day, I'm wearing uh, that Lancome Idol mascara. I'm also wearing their waterproof eyeliner. And this really does a good job getting in there, dissolving it, breaking it up. I can't do makeup removers. They always burn my eyes, sting my skin. If you have rosacea, we were talking about this at the beginning of the vlog, but if you have rosacea um, and you're looking for a way to remove makeup, try a cleansing oil or cleansing balm. Alternatively, another good option is cold cream. Like the Pond's cold cream is really a good option because it dissolves the makeup, but it also is like very soothing. Um, I don't, 
you know, they call it cold cream and it does kind of feel nice and chilled going on the skin, but the oil is another option or a cleansing balm. The main difference between like cleansing balm and cleansing oil is just the balm is solid at room temperature. I also started using the um, Isntree Yam Root Vegan Milk Cleanser. Oh my gosh. Those of you with sensitive skin, rosacea, consider this mild cleanser because it's such a pleasant experience. It's free of fragrance. It's very hydrating. It has this like slippery texture to it, which may be off-putting for some, but I really enjoy it. It almost kind of cloaks your skin in a hug as it glides across the surface of the skin and gently cleanses without disrupting the underlying skin barrier. You see, with the double cleanse approach, the first step, the oil cleanser, is kind of just like getting in there and breaking up residue buildup on the skin surface. The second step with the mild cleanser is actually getting in there and cleansing everything away. So that's why I like doing it that way. Typically, I do the second step in the shower, but I decided to do it here so you guys could see this cleanser in action. And as you can see, it took everything off. Well, hey guys, I am all clean, moisturized, hydrated, got my tretinoin on. But um, one of the things I was thinking about, you know, on Sundays I do a Q&A over on my Instagram and I was posted to Facebook where basically I just, you know, post a still image of myself and I say, hey, drop any skincare related questions in the comments of this Instagram post or this Facebook post. And I will usually answer, you know, a handful of them, as, as many as I can. And I post the question and the response to my Instagram stories and that's saved in a highlight bubble if you go to my Instagram profile. Anyway, one of the questions I got today was like, how do you deal with dry eyelids, especially if you live in a cold, dry climate? And I gotta tell you, petroleum jelly is a game changer for dry eyelids or eyelid eczema because it prevents water loss really well and it also um, prevents penetration of irritants into the skin. So it really is a, is a great option. Plus, it's free of common allergens and irritants. I mean, it's basically, your immune system really doesn't care about Vaseline, so that's a good thing. It's just like an inert little barrier support there. It's really underrated for all of the things you can do. It's also beneficial for cutting down on chafing, windburn if you live somewhere cold and windy um what a day y'all today was gorgeous like it's so nice when the weather is beautiful because you just want to be outside and soaking it all in and it's such a mood boost i'm telling you summertime here can get a little like you know winter months get in other places because it's really just too hot to safely be outside for long stretches of time so you kind of get a little, you know, the, a bit of the blues in the summertime. But that being said, I really love summer and I find that, you know, I'm happy as can be throughout the summer because I like all of the summer festivities, like the summer holidays and summer food, summer fruits. I really like summer. And I love the beach, so I don't know. Winter here I, I don't mind because it's pretty mild, but winter is not not where it's at for in my mind. <laughs> like no thanks. Uh, I'm not I'm not team winter. I do like winter when I don't have to go anywhere. Then it's fine. You know, it's like all cozy with a fireplace and my coffee and it's relaxing, sure, winter time sounds divine. But the realities of existing places that have strong you know intense winters no thank you i don't want to be out there shoveling snow no thanks defrosting uh the windshield i hate doing that uh i hate driving in icy conditions because it's not fun although i got really good at driving in snow when i lived in colorado like i had this little trick sometimes i get stuck in the snow like in a parking space like you'd park somewhere and then maybe you'd be parked there for a while and then you would get a huge dumping of snow and you kind of have to dig your car out. The car I had at the time, I remember I would get in it and you know, you kind of like 
try and dig some of the snow out as best you could, heat up the car so it was somewhat, def you know, defrosted. And then I remember I would like move it forward and back and forward and back and then I would like myself I would I could rock my own car <laughs> and I could get it to rock out of the out of the space and float away I got good at, at that you know there's certain things that are really intimidating but once you learn how to do them and you just become comfortable and it becomes a necessity that you do it and do it efficiently then it's like a, not a big deal anymore like parallel parking is one of those things where you just put yourself in that situation and get uncomfortable a handful of times eventually it will just be like no big deal um that's that's a lot of things like if there's anything that you are intimidated about doing or you're like apprehensive you just kind of have to throw yourself in that situation and i mean provided it's not like hazardous to your health or something you know what i mean like within reason just throw yourself in that situation and be uncomfortable for a couple of times and eventually it just will be such a non-issue that you'll start doing it all the time and you'll look back and be like why was i ever freaked out about doing this it's like not a big deal all right y'all i am gonna wrap this vlog up i've had a great day i hope you have had a great day thank you so much for watching to the end if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye